spinal fluid or cerebrospinal fluid is created in the brain and it's meant to in, in elementary school I remember learning oh that's the fluid that cushions the brain and it really does it goes around the brain around the spine up and around um, and it's meant to just add some flexibility to the whole system so your brain isn't just sitting on itself it, it there's some buoyancy in the brain you have uh, head injuries, concussions, there's, if we didn't have spinal fluid, any injury to the brain would affect everything. Um, but spinal fluid is created from the blood. If it filters out the blood through some mechanisms in the ventricles in the brain, and it just flows around everything, cushions the brain, cushions the spine, um, but carries nutrients to different parts of the body. It's a protein-based fluid, so it's fine with the shunt that it drains to the peritoneal cavity in the abdomen area, and it's just reabsorbed in the body. It's, it's, not, a, a, it's not a foreign fluid that would affect anything. It's just reabsorbed naturally and um, becomes part of the body again. The spinal fluid is produced in the uh, ventricles of the brain. You have four ventricles of the brain. And in the lateral, and I believe even the third, um, I'd have to Google that. <laughs> but it's produced there, and you produce, an adult produces 20 to 30 milliliters an hour. And I think you have like 120 or 160 milliliters in your spinal fluid system at any given time. But if you're producing, in, I learned this part in California, not at, in Utah, of course, but in California, they said you produce about a shot glass worth of fluid an hour. So 20 to 30 milliliters to me, I, I don't speak metric, but a shot glass worth, I can envision that. I know how much that is. So if you're producing that much and your body isn't able to move it out of the brain at all, you could see how quickly it would build up in a head, but especially in those ventricles, because it's not, it's, building up in the ventricles, but also all the wrinkles you see on a CAT scan or MRI, those v pictures, all those wrinkles, they move there, they move outside of the head, they cushion the head, um, even down through the spine, it can build up. And sometimes it, for especially some people, as it's building up, it'll find ways to get out because the pressure is so high, it will push it out. Um, I have, I had it last year, it was going down my throat and, and my nose, I could feel it. And some people have a form of hydrocephalus where it's relieved naturally through their nose. I had a gal connect with me last year. She's like, well, I'm debating whether to get a shunt, but I just, you know, when I change elevation from where she worked to where she lived, it's like, as I go down that hill, all of a sudden I get a gush of fluid out of my nose. And I'm like, well, that's the coolest thing because your body does it automatically. I'm like, well, okay, so if it can get out, essentially germs could get back in and cause meningitis, but I'm like, I don't know that I would get a shunt for that reason because shunts fail. Some people have a shunt forever. They can get one shunt and that's all they need for a lifetime. And others of us just like to be creative with our shunts and they like to fail. Um, but that's where the spinal fluid is and what it does and it can build up very quickly.